This beer, very good. I don't even know what it tastes like, like in terms of like comparing it to something. Also, I don't know what you normally drink. It's got a gold top, pretty cool. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyle Poole and I am a photographer and video creator residing in Southwestern Ontario. Today I'm gonna to be editing one photo in Lightroom and specifically one photo that I took last summer or this past summer on a camping slash backcountry hiking trip. I've done nothing with the photo. So I'm super excited to actually work on this photo and edit it. So the goal of this video is I'm just gonna sit back, and enjoy this lovely Cremor Urbach dark lager. I'm just gonna be chilling. It's gonna be hanging out. The phone that I'm gonna be editing on is my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Uh, the reason that I edit on this phone is because since I started photography very recreationally years ago, I had the Lightroom mobile app on my phone and that's what I edited my photos on. I didn't even have a computer that could process. At the time, actually, I didn't even have a computer. <laughs> and I mean, mobile phones have their, their struggles too, but the reason I got this one is because it's massive. It's like the size of this beer can and it has a stylus. So it has this super fun little pen um, that makes editing very accurate, especially I'm very big into selective edits. So the accuracy with this is much greater than what I find on my computer, even using the touchpad. I really like using this. The phone actually has a huge storage. I believe it comes with one terabyte and then I have a micro SD card that's like 256 gigabytes. So my phone has so much storage, like ample storage. So I do all of my editing or like 90% of it from this Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. I mean, I have this computer that I totally try to edit my photos on, but I never end up doing it because this is just way more convenient. So first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the screen recorder and I don't want any sound because Pretty irrelevant to be honest. Don't need any sound from my phone. Okay, so first thing I always do on all of my photos is I size them immediately. So I put them to whatever I need that photo for. So for instance, this photo is for my Instagram feed. So that would be sized to a four by five. So let's go ahead and make that four by five. Now, right off the bat, the first thing I notice is this isn't centered. So the actual fire is not centered on the screen, which would bother me. <laughs> Bit of a perfectionist, so that would bother me. So you can simply fix that just by making the selected area smaller. Now we don't wanna make it too small. You wanna ultimately make your photo as big as possible and give it the most amount of dead space, as I like to call it. Um, that kind of allows other colors and details. So. That is very much centered, so hit the check mark. The next thing that I like to do is get rid of any imperfections right away so that I can get right into my edit without having things that I just know I'm gonna take out of the photo. So for this instance, I'm gonna take out some of these little bits of fire that are not part of the main fire. So if I use the Band-Aid tool and I just kinda use the stylus and draw that off, we can get rid of those pretty quickly. Now, you don't actually have to have the stylus. I didn't have the stylus for like ever. I just got this within this year. And I find it very helpful, but honestly, a lot of the time I still don't even use it because I'm just lazy. And if I'm not in a comfortable position to actually like draw, I'm like laying on the couch or something and I'm holding my phone up like this, it's really not that comfortable. It's more comfortable to use my finger. But in this instance, we're using the stylus. So we're just gonna draw all of those away and it's basically just gonna make it look like it wasn't even there. This does not need to be accurate at all. If it's, there's a lot of detail, sometimes it's a lot harder, but this particular instance, it's like super easy because this is just one pretty flat color. So don't need to do too much work there. We're just gonna go ahead and hit that check mark. Photo's already looking so much better than it did just with that. Now, every photo that I edit now now, I never used to do this because I didn't even know it existed. I was such a noob in photography. I just pop a preset on, so I know there's certain presets that the way I shoot things, they're just made for, for those photos. So this is not in my preset pack because it's more of a niche one, and I only use it for low light situations, but we're just gonna drop in summer low light. Now, I know that has a selective piece on it, so I'm just gonna, actually, I'm just gonna delete that off because it doesn't even need to be on this photo. Um, sometimes it works better, but it doesn't need to be on this one. 
Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is selective edit. So I already have like my color base on how I like my photo. Next thing I'm gonna do is take a sip from my beer. So weird talking while editing a photo. I don't, I guess I normally do this in my head, but I don't think about it. So next thing we're gonna do, you're just gonna go to the area where we wanna actually edit. Hit the plus mark there, grab the pen. We're just gonna draw in, and this does not need to be accurate in this particular instance. Sometimes it does need to be accurate, but for this one, it does not. I'm just gonna draw in where all those rocks are. And the reason we're doing that is because I'm gonna brighten them because I feel like they're a little bit hidden and they actually have some pretty great detail in them because this photo was actually shot very well in terms of exposure. Um, I like to shoot my photos pretty dark and that kind of makes it challenging for me a lot of time, but it's just the way I like to shoot them. I find I can get more detail that way. But in terms of brightening things, sometimes it's a little harder, but this particular instance, it's pretty easy. So we're actually gonna move the shadows up quite a bit because that's gonna show those rocks really, really well. Um, move the highlights up. And yeah, we're just gonna select all the things that we want. Now, I think I actually didn't fuck this up at all. Normally I fuck it up quite a bit and I have to like erase a lot of stuff, but it does not look like I did. Good for me. Wow, so I'm gonna click that again. Click on the screen and then that'll bring up your options to you know change things. And recently I've been really getting into moving this dehaze around a bit. Um, I never used to do that but I think it looks cool and it works for this particular photo at least. So those rocks actually look pretty solid to me because we're gonna brighten this photo overall. It's not gonna stay super dark. We're gonna start on these flames now. So we're gonna zoom in on that so we can get a better angle on it. So we're gonna zoom on the flames, select a new pen and we are gonna select more of the fire here and specifically just the bottom half because that's where most of the detail is. Uh, if you notice on this photo, so we're gonna go clarity times like 65, like super high. We can even actually mess around with the dehaze a little bit, a little bit of sharpness, and we're gonna drop the highlights a little bit. Reason being is we're just gonna draw up on these flames because I know it's gonna look decent. Cool, that looks great. I always have the check mark on finish because then I can pinch and adjust where I want to start my next edit from. Now my next edit is actually gonna be on this very white area on the photo. Draw in these white areas because I don't want those. And we're just gonna take the highlights down on those just to drop kind of what looks like it's a little overexposed. You can't fix all of it, unfortunately, but we can fix a little bit. So that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna adjust this top part, which is nice because it's actually a little bit out of focus. Um, so that means that I don't have to go crazy on editing it. It can kind of stay pretty natural the way it is. So that's nice. It's a nice added bonus to this. And then I find dragging with two fingers always works well if I'm trying to move while I'm editing. We move this too much. See the clarity, it's gonna make it really, really bright. The way to fix that, just drop your highlights at the same time. That's gonna give it a sharpness, but keep it dark. So I think that looks so much better already, which is nice. Next thing we're gonna do is I always, whatever my focal point is of my photo, I just make a mask like around it. So we select the circular tool there and we're gonna make like this. If you go to this invert button, that makes it actually go the opposite. And then we're gonna drop that down a bit to make this actually a little bit bigger just to really get the area we're looking for. Awesome, so that looks super dark and that's kind of the vibe that I'm going for on this, on this photo, so. I hope you're finding this entertaining because this is, this is how we roll. So this is the first time we're touching any of the whole photo editing tabs, um, not just specifically the flames or the rocks or anything. This is just the entire photo. So ultimately we're gonna make it a little bit brighter. 
So let's go up to like plus 10. That just gives it a nicer tone, especially for Instagram. Instagram's kind of annoying because they take your colors away from you and it just bothers the crap out of everyone, or at least me. So we're just gonna move that around. We're actually gonna pull the shadows quite a bit because that's gonna really help those rocks that we just worked on. And that's gonna help them a lot because that's gonna give them even more detail. And we're gonna mess around with the clarity. Let's go over to the clarity. We're gonna mess around with that, just like maybe like plus 10 vignette, like just a hair. Well, I always add a little bit of grain to my photos. So that way when I post more of like a vintage film look kind of photo, it actually goes more with my feed that a lot of the photos have some grain. They don't have to have a ton, um, but just like that little bit of grain. And in my opinion, that photo is good. Actually, I need to center it a little bit better. So I'm just gonna go there. Perfect, so that photo is perfectly fine. Now, I'll probably go back into it a few more times and pick away at super small things, but that is essentially how I am gonna edit that photo and that's the end process of this photo. So I hope that was somewhat informative and you took some piece of information from this. If not, you just got to hang out with me and we were just chilling as I was editing a photo that I was gonna edit anyway. So um, like I said, I normally edit from either this desk or my couch in my living room and I just put a podcast on or some lo-fi music. So thank you so much for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. Um, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like and subscribe button, then you will get notified for future videos. And my goal for the rest of this year and 2021, um, now that I am self-employed doing this, um, is to produce a lot more content and be a lot more regular with my content. So if you're into that and you want to uh, you want to support the channel, hit the like and subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh good, that camera's like about to die. That one probably is too. Everything's about to die. I love being cold, they keep the house at like 20 degrees or like 19 degrees Celsius. Not Fahrenheit, that's way too cold. I can tell you right now, my next video is gonna be on Instagram grid and like branding yourself. So stay tuned for that video. I'm really stoked to make it and it's something I'm very passionate about. So if you're into that, Subscribe to the channel and uh, support your boy because we're out here grinding. Anyways, peace everyone. Ah, I still haven't finished that.